These were the first five women in the Swedish parliament. Kerstin Hesselgren, Elisabeth Tam, Berta Velin, Nelly Thuring, Agda Östlund. Women in Sweden were the last in the Nordic countries to gain the right to vote in 1921. What challenges did women face in gaining that right? Many. This is history professor Kristina Florin. Florin specializes in women's history and has studied the history of women's right to vote in Sweden. Politics was for men. End of story. The general view, at least among men, was that women weren't suited to be involved in politics, that they didn't want the right to vote. They weren't educated enough to deal with things as complicated as the state and the nation. Men officially got the right to vote in 1909. But farmers, industry workers, most of the middle class and all women were still left out. The so-called universal and equal suffrage was neither universal nor equal. Not only were women excluded, but also many other groups. It was really only half of the Swedish men who had a right to vote in the beginning of the 20th century. The reason why Swedes started discussing the right to vote at the end of the 19th century is spelt education. Not least the fact that universities opened to women in the middle of the 19th century. That led to Sweden having a fairly large group of well-educated women. They were the ones who formed the basis for the big movement for women's right to vote. The argument that there were no well-educated women didn't hold up anymore. Women traveled around the country raising awareness of women's rights, signed petitions, held meetings and arranged protests. The meeting was very important, that you could spread the message in person. There were courses in political issues, in that way it was a movement of knowledge, to empower women. To change you need to have a vision that things will get better. The right to vote became a symbol for women's possibilities in many areas, both within education, politics and professions. At the time, voices against women in parliament were many and loud. Today, many of the arguments seem bizarre. Like the one stating that women's skirts would be too wide to fit in the parliament corridors. Finally, in 1921, Hesselgren, Tam, Velin, Thuring and Östlund could take place in parliament. Much thanks to Signe Bergman, who, among other things, was behind the collection of almost half a million women's signatures supporting the right to vote. Despite this, Bergman is not very well known in Swedish history. Signe Bergman was really an essential figure. She knew both French, German and English, which made it possible for the Swedish movement to go international. The queen of women's right to vote, in my eyes. Although Sweden implemented universal and equal suffrage in 1921, some were still left out. You couldn't have a previous conviction. You had to have finished your military service. Institutionalized people didn't have the right to vote. Practical and administrative obstacles limited the voting rights for many, among others the Sami and those who didn't have a fixed address. Although some work remains to be done, the last hundred years have at least partly closed the gender gap. The first time both sexes were allowed to vote in Sweden, back in 1921, 47% of women went to the polls. In the 2018 election, the share of women's votes was nearly the double 
88%.